This conference will now be recorded. And I'm sharing my screen. So let me know once everyone are able to see. Right. So is that. Google.com. Yes. So we were discussing about S3 and uh, what do you mean by versioning and how we can push logs to S3 bucket from an EC2 instances. That also we have done twice, right? Isn't it? Yes, sir. Correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. So now if you go, if you check, so whenever you upload anything to the bucket, right? So by default, it will be under standard. Okay. So you will notice that every bucket will uh, say it is a, as a standard. So let me log into the console. Okay, so I am logging into my AWS management console and if I go to the S3 bucket, okay, so if you see here, so one bucket is public and if you notice anything, it says that, let me go to the other bucket. Okay, easy to logs. Yeah, if you see here now, this is the error.html I have uploaded here, correct? Now, in the under the storage class column, you see it is written as storage. Okay, now while creating a new bucket, also, if you go to create bucket, let me refresh, let me say that like that any any name you can give okay cr or something unique i am trying to give here or else let me give my name mitun dash uh, october 2020 okay and i can choose any region why they have given region because even though this is a global entity as per the compliance you can choose in which region your data should reside that's it so I can create the bucket in any of the region I want. So for simplicity, I am just maintaining as Northern Virginia. Okay. And, and keep it as it is. Okay. If you go to the advanced settings, okay, you will see something known as object lock. Now, what do you mean by this object lock? See, object lock means it is a mechanism by which you can prevent the accidental deletion. Okay, if I enable this, what will happen? Enabling object lock will permanently allow object in this bucket to be locked. Okay, so why we enable this? Because there are certain chances that some, because in an organization, multiple people will be working and there might be chances that someone may delete it accidentally so in order to prove prevent that you can do that see you might be blocked from deleting the objects and the bucket additional object log configuration is required in the bucket details after the bracket creation to pr protect object uh, objects in this bucket from being deleted okay now if i create this bucket now this is getting created okay now this is the new bucket. Now, whatever the object I upload here, now I'm going to upload some, uh, say, the demo. Yeah. So, test upload only, I will upload. So, this is my object. Now, this has succeeded. 
okay now if i try to let us try what will be the mechanism i mean what will be the behavior if i try to delete it okay so now let us see delete the object so why it is got deleted even though i have enabled the object lock that is because the reason is i have enabled the object lock at the bucket level so you need to enable the object lock at the uh, object level only then so let us upload again so you can go to the properties now here while uploading you will see lot of storage classes so that day also i was explaining that these are something like a, you can relate it to a train uh, uh, reservation classes so there is sleeper there is second class first class ac normal class okay so each class you know represents so this is the standard standard means this is the costliest when compared to all the other storage classes in s3 okay and this is the cheapest glacier deep archive this is the cheapest but what is the condition once you move the uh, object to the glacier deep archive you need to keep it for minimum 180 days okay but for now i am going to keep it very simple i am going to keep it as a, as a standard okay now i am not mentioning anything else okay so let us click upload okay now let us close this now let us see the properties go inside now if you see the object management overview it says bucket versioning is enabled object lock enabled so when enabled this object will be prevented from being deleted or ordered until the hold is explicitly removed okay so so it is enabled this object will be prevented from being deleted or overwritten until the hold is explicitly removed okay now see this additional thing here object lock retention mode what does it mean see in this mode the users cannot overwrite or delete this object or alter its lock settings unless they have special permissions in compliance mode the objects can't be overwritten or deleted by any user including the root user in your account you're getting it so if you go to add object settings and you can edit some settings you want if you want to rename the object you can try that so let us try to re rename the object so i am going to name it as say um, within dash upload and i'm trying to save the changes okay it is allowing me to rename the object earlier it was test dash uh, sorry test hyphen upload right now another thing you should notice here is one second go inside the bucket and see here and see for the star now again if you want to change the storage class here you can do that by all means okay now but i don't want to do that i want to do that automatically so how to do that automatically like i know my use case that i want logs uh, for 30 days for the first 30 days to be available immediately but after 30 days i still want to store my logs but i want a cheaper storage solutions so how to achieve that so you can achieve that by going to the management console and you can create a life cycle rule 
okay so you can create a life cycle rule you can mention as for um, my life cycle rule for 60 days okay that means i am going to maintain the data for first of 60 days in the standard and i am going to move the other things i mean after it completes 60 days i am going to move it to the another storage class so move the current version so current version means see when you enable versioning right so there will be a current version and the previous version so if you are only bothered about the current version only choose that or if you want to move the all the versions you have to select that as well okay only then it will appear see if i don't select this okay so for simplicity let us keep both to understand this then now where you want to move okay now you move to glacier instant retrieval after 30 days okay that is i am talking about the current version of the objects then you can move it to the glacier deep archive after 30 days okay and this is optional like number of newer version to retain that is optional so how many versions you want like you want to keep 100 versions or only 10 versions so like that you can mention so i will mention here for simplicity i have mentioned just 10 version you can keep it okay now come and see here so what will happen here it will give you a clear flow chart kind of thing here so day zero nothing is happening so objects once you upload object it becomes a day one and from day one to day 30 it is going to sit in the standard this is for the current versions and this is for the non-current version so once it completes 30 days it is going to move to the glacier instant retrieval and the non-current version it will move to the 10 newest non-current versions are retained all the other current versions are moved to glacier deep archive okay isn't it yes or no or again if you want to permanently delete the non-current version of the objects after the you can also add that so once so the zero newest current versions are retained and all the other non-current versions are permanently deleted so for how many days so you have to mention here because already 30 days you are keeping then you have to mention so permanently days after object becomes non-current so you have to mention if you mention 30 it is it may not work you see here so what will happen so day 30 it will clash because at the day 30 you are trying to move all the uh, 10 uh, newest non-current versions you are trying to retain correct then you are moving to deep archive then what is the point again okay so what will happen so this rule is not required because already at the day 30 you are keeping only 10 new, uh, versions and the, all the other one you are moving okay so this rule is not required you're getting the point so like this you can select so you don't require then are coming to the expert current version of the objects now let us see the current version of the objects now day 30 they are moving to the glacier instant retrieval now just write 31 days now after they move to the glacier instant retrieval it is going to uh, sit for 31 days and the object expire okay but there will be some clauses because whenever you move to certain storage classes right See for example, let me duplicate and let me change the go here and change the set object X settings and edit storage class. 
now if you see if you select uh, instant retrieval what is the minimum storage duration time so this may not work because if i choose 31 or 30 because the rule says if you choose gla glacier instant retrieval you need to store it for minimum 90 days and glacier deep archive minimum 180 days okay so these rules may not work okay but you can so what you can do if you are aware of the glacier instant retrieval so after 30 days it is going to move to the instant retrieval and 90 days you are uh, going to keep so you have to mention here 90 so mention 91 so object one at the 91th day it will delete so now this it makes a sense okay because it is moving to instant retrieval whereas the non current version what we are uh, you know select this and we have to select 181 days okay and don't keep any version and keep zero so because you know after day 30 it is going to move to the glacier deep archive and what is the condition once you move to the glacier deep archive you need to maintain for minimum 180 days and 181th day you can delete it okay and create rule that's it so everything whatever the object you are going to upload so it will wait for 30 days and it is going to move okay but i don't recommend to create this otherwise it will start applying these rules okay now coming to the object and coming to the object properties okay now one more concept we have to discuss is default encryption so encryption is a way mechanism where if you enable you have to enable with the key it is something like additional security okay so it is a way of securing the data transfer okay because in even though it is a storage so you will be saving some confidential data and that data um, you don't want to be uh, manipulated by some other unknown user right so that is the reason what we do is we encrypt the data using the aws s3 managed keys and you can save these changes the moment you save these changes right so this will basically what it will do it will encrypt your data and ensure that there are no compromise with when it comes to the this thing okay now go to the object lock now see here this i already discussed so store objects using the right ones and read many model okay to help you prevent objects from being deleted and overwritten for a fixed amount of time see once s3 amazon s3 object is enabled you cannot disable object lock or suspend bucket versioning for the bucket okay now automatic now what is this we have also enabled this i we have to also enable this default retention what do you mean by default retention see default retention means automatically protect new objects put into this bucket from being deleted or overwritten so this we have not enabled okay now in this so the reason we have not enabled it that is the reason it was allowing me to delete the object okay so compliance means no users can overwrite or delete protected objects version during the retention period so how many days let us keep it for 10 days and if i change this okay and if you upload anything okay now let us upload test upload upload close now let us try to delete 
them so let us try now as per that settings it should not allow me to delete uh, one second why it is delay allowing me to delete oh see here fail to delete The information will no longer offer you nugget from this page. Fail to delete. No, no, nothing. Uh, why it is allowing me one second? Let me check again whether it is enabled or not properly. User is specifically. Yeah, this correct. We have changed, but why it is allowing one second? Uh? Let me upload again. And close this. Go here. See, objects will be prevented from being overwritten or deleted for the duration of the retention period so this should not allow to me to delete okay so let me just try again let me try to rename it let me say it as test 3 no it should not allow this second What a minute. Just a minute. Okay, one minute we have to one more setting is there so we have to enable that so let me go here so upload right so we need to go to the object list and object overview opens choose the name of the object that you want to enable or disable legal hold for the object overview opens and under object lock legal hold so let me go here close it get uh, actions
हाँ दिस इज द वन सो ऑब्जेक्ट लॉक लीगल होल्ड सो प्रिवेंट ऑब्जेक्ट बींग बींग डिलीटेड और ओवर रिटर्न सो वी हैव टू एनेबल दिस एज वेल ओके सो नाउ इट विल नॉट अलाउ मी टू अंटिल द ट्वेंटी सॉरी टेन डेज रिटेंशन पीरियड नाउ लेट अस ट्राई टू एक्शंस एंड ट्राई टू रीनेम फर्स्ट एंड सी टेस्ट सो लेट अस लेट अस ऑब्जेक्ट लॉक एंड ट्राई टू सेव चेंजेस अगेन इट इज अलाउंग सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग लीगल होल्ड डिसेबल्ड वही ओके लीगल होल्ड अनेबल्स कॉम्प्लेन्स में सो रिटेन अंटिल नवंबर सिक्स Okay, so as per this, until November six, we cannot delete that. So let me try to delete. Maybe I am the owner. It is trying, you know, allowing me to delete. Okay, so apart from uh, the object creator, so nobody else will be able to delete it, even though they are having the permission, because it is uh, clear here, right? Mm, should not allow. So yes, if we go. Sorry, we go here and object management overview. See, see here. Legal hold can be turned on or off by AWS accounts that have specific IAM permission. So enable and save changes, and then Okay, so now try to rename. Yeah, so now if you see here, it is changing. So as I am the owner here, so it is allowing me to do that. So at the otherwise, as I am the object creator, so it is allowing me to do it. but if you check the versions um one second let me try to rename it again so object lock is disabled so as i am the owner it is allowing me to do that okay so now let me upload the same file again and again twice let us see upload add files okay so now we have enabled the versioning right so 
so as you can see now we are getting all the objects okay so now go to the properties it is in the compliance mode and let me try to delete the oldest version Just a minute. So as you can see that it will only allow me to create the objects but not the versions. Okay, so this is because of the object lock. You getting it? Okay. You getting it? Any doubts? okay so for the object owner it will not allow you to delete the version also okay so that is the reason i am trying to do again and again now let me go to the uh, versions and try to edit okay now so let me so it is already delayed, uh, disabled okay and uh, one more thing okay so now we can we cannot so it is in the object is immutable until it's, until its retention date has passed so until 6 we cannot do anything okay so leave that as it is okay so this was about the object lock okay so if you want to delete forcefully you have to delete everything forcefully okay and you have to or else you have to wait until the retention period okay now this was about the storage classes and other things now for one more thing we will use the s3 bucket okay so you can use the s3 bucket for creating a static website okay so which will be a very uh, you can consider this as a small capstone project okay but before we go into that i need to show you uh, guys something okay like how dns work what is dns uh, and everything so first let us go to that and understand how a dns will work okay now for example in if you open any browser and if you try to type anything for example www dot return tech training dot com so this is i am trying to hit the website because I will uh, feel very comfortable remembering, remembering the names. Okay. Now, if I hit this, 
now i am getting a website in front of me so this page it is a very small one i mean i mean it is a very simple page but i am getting a website but how this is possible how my computer will know that if i enter mithun tech training what this browser will do how the browser will come to know how the browser will render this page have any has anyone try to uh, you know figure this out okay not only mithun tech training any website for that matter say for example namecheap.com this is another website sorry there is a spelling wrong yeah so now for the very first time if you notice it took a lot of time but when you close this and when you try to open it again the moment see did you notice the time this was the second time when you tried to visit the uh, i mean it was super super fast the reason is this very simple let me go back to the diagram here so let us try to understand the dns how dns works okay so this is a very very big concept please pay attention to this okay so dns means domain name service okay so dns means domain name service now you may ask me what do, what do you mean by domain name service okay so to the answer to that question is see we humans don't want to remember anything by numbers whether it is an ip address or phone number now first let us consider a scenario of phone number now this is me okay and this is my mobile imagine this is my mobile now if i tell my mobile dial uh, vimal will it dial no because my mobile does not understand the word vimal until and unless if i have stored something like this if i have stored vimal number something like this 998 10 digit number valid number only then it will dial you are getting the point similarly if i tell or if you tell your mobile phones dial mithun will it dial of course if we have saved my number against my name definitely it will dial otherwise it will not suppose you uh, you know any one of you doesn't know my any one out of you uh, out of like eight members does doesn't know my name okay imagine vimal does not know my name okay so so this guy is vimal so this is me okay so this is me and this is vimal now he want to contact me to clarify his some doubts but he doesn't know my num uh, mobile number what will he do he will try to contact his friend who is also have enrolled in this batch okay if he has he will provide to him right he will provide him to the number and then he will reach out to me to my mobile number through my mobile number if not this you know this cycle continues again he will ask the program manager he will say i don't have let us check with the program manager so he will contact the program manager and the program manager will give the contact number to him and to both of you 
and then both of you can contact so this is what the recursive query so until and unless you get my mobile number you will be querying okay so same phenomena happens in the computer world same same because when i want to reach any website so this laptop does not know the website for example if i want to try to reach example.com or say amazon.com it does not know the address we will recognize by this amazon.com but the computers does not understand this name naming convention that is what we have been discussing from day one that is because the computers does not understand this letters it need an ip address like this What it requires, it needs a IP address in the form of a.b.c.d. Only then it will render a page. Okay, but what will happen when we type www.amazon.com? What will happen? I will tell you what picture will go through in the background. So in our every operating system, whether you take Windows, Linux, everything, we have something called as resolver. Resolver is something related to our phone book or our contact list. Okay. Suppose if I want to dial Vimal, what I'll do, I'll open my mobile and I'll go to the contacts and see whether mobile uh, Vimal number is there and then I will select and dial. Same thing happens with the resolver. Okay. If you want to check how your resolver will look like, just press shift plus R then type cmd okay then type sorry okay so IP just type IP config display DNS. See here. So this is the every operating system phone book or a contact list. See here. Everything there is a record. Record name, record type, a record, the IP address. See this is what the, the resolver stores the information whatever the website you have visited the, all the ip address will be stored you are getting it if you don't trust me okay if you don't trust me so rather than typing facebook.com just type this what you do select this right click go to edit copy go to any one of the browser and hit the i mean copy paste and hit enter what will you what will happen you will be redirected to the web page okay you're getting it Got it? Clear everyone? So, this is what happens. See, it is for us. Whatever we want to type, it is for us. Okay. And you can check the IP address of any website you want. So, for example, Jenkins.io. Now, copy this and just type, go to your CMD, type NS lookup and just type enter. Jenkins dot IO server unknown. One second. Uh, if NS lookup doesn't work, then try for Jenkins dot IO. You will get this IP. Okay. 
go to edit copy and paste here and delete those square brackets and hit enter see i'm sorry not to answer the request okay okay so this is the website so for everything it will store a record like this so now coming back to this diagram here so what will happen whenever i am querying for amazon.com if the resolver has this number so the resolver will tell so this is the resolver now the resolver will give the ip address to the browser and the browser will contact the server okay and it will reach the server let me mention the server here so think that this is a uh, amazon server where they have hosted so it will go it will reach the thing if the resolver has the ip address oh yes mithun i have the ip address of amazon.com it is this x dot x dot x dot x and something amazon.com it will store store it would it would have stored like this but what if the scenario like if it doesn't know if the resolver don't know the address then what will happen like we ask someone else out of our friends so the operating system will contact our internet server there is something called as dns servers okay see we will we would have uh, connected to the internet via router will you agree with me right so we would have connected to the internet via this router correct now this router is connected to the internet perfectly fine so this is connected to the okay this is internet so if the resolver does not have it will go to the isp server for example my isp is act fiber net so it will reach the act dns server it will reach the act dns server like this so it will reach the act dns servers so act dns servers if this has information then definitely it will give it to you do the resolver and then it will happen if this also does not have there is something called as root servers what are they root servers okay we will consider this as a root servers so these root servers will have information about dot com dot uk dot in dot co dot in like that so they are all root servers okay so in any so now this is a root server now this is one type of a root dot net so that i didn't mention here let me mention that also dot net so it this dot net the ending so that is called the root of the domain if the domain is app dot diagrams dot net then dot net is the root of the domain or another one is if facebook dot com is facebook is the domain then dot com is so these root server will be scattered all over the world okay so these are managed by a uh, special organization okay uh, name as iana okay so let me type here iana internet assigned number authority so they will be maintaining this 
द रूट जोन मैनेजमेंट ओके ऑल दो थिंग्स दे विल दे आर गोइंग टू मैनेज ओके हवेवर दीज आर ऑल अगेन कॉम्प्लेक्स टॉपिक्स विच कम्स इन अंडर नेटवर्किंग ओके बट इफ यू आर वेरी क्यूरियस यू कैन गो थ्रू एंड लर्न नॉट ए इश्यू ओके बट फॉर आवर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दीज आर जस्ट दे विल टेल ओके नाउ द अवर डी एन एस सर्वर हैज टोल्ड कमिंग बैक टू द डायग्राम now this act that act fiber net dns server told to my resolver that boss i don't know the address of amazon.com but i know the ip address of the root server you can go and contact him so this will tell the ip of the root server now the resolver will now go and reach this root server now the root server will tell to the resolver that boss i don't know about amazon.com but i know where the dot com related websites reside you can go and contact him okay so this root server will give the because i am looking for amazon.com so this has for dot com right so this will give the information of dot com or uh, you know this will give the tld server so it will go to the tld server so let me name it as a tld server top level domain tld server let me write here tld server tld means top level domain server okay so this tld server will have the information about all the dot com associated domains okay now once the resolver got the ip address of this tld server it will go and contact the tld now the tld server will say yes i cannot give you the exact ip address but i can give you one name server details you can contact that name server and that name server will give you the exact records of the domain you are looking for okay so that is called the name server okay so you can consider this as a yeah name server uh, okay so this is a name server so this will ask to sorry yeah so this will ask to contact the this one so this is a name server okay now this name server will have entry like this so let me write it here so it will have something called as a record so a record 1.2.3.4 and amazon it will have this name server it will have like this a record just like our phone book we save no so a record means it is it will store the ip address against the domain name now finally the resolver have got the ip address of the amazon.com now after getting that information it will hit this server which is one dot sorry let me write here which is 1.2.3.4 and now the web page is served so the very first time this is the scenario it will take place you're getting it so for the very very first time these are the things which will happen so again a recap so first i am trying to hit the amazon.com then the resolver will check if it is as ip address it will give and then we'll get the web page if not then it will contact our isp that is internet service provider dns server then if the dns server has that information about amazon.com it will give and then again we can hit this amazon.com server if not this will tell to contact the root servers then our resolver will go and contact the root server then the root server will say i don't know exactly but i can tell you about the dot com tld server you can contact him 
then again it will come back and it will go to the TLD servers. Okay, then the TLD server it will say, I don't know the exact IP address, but I can give you the contact of the name server which has this information about the Amazon.com. Then again it will come back and it will go to the name server and finally the name server will say yes i do have the information about amazon.com here you go you can contact him with this ip address now my resolver happily comes back and it will hit this server and we get the web page okay so if you notice you notice it in your laptop anything for the first time when you try to hit any new website for the first time it will take time because the very very first time it does not know the ip address but for the second time it will be already stored in the cache okay if you do here display dns now it will have showed something about about the all the uh, i mean the website i have visited clear clear guys yes sir yes sir okay see this topic is will be asked in interview so you have to learn this thoroughly okay right now we are going to so you you know create our own website using any one of the domain you want okay so for this purpose i am going to use the domain which i have purchased from the freenom.com okay now before going to that the dns server we have in aws is known as route 53 okay so this is the route 53 so the dns okay so why it is named as route 53 because the port number of dns service is 53 so that is the reason they have named it as 5353 okay so they may be asked so in interview to test your knowledge sometimes they will ask you the port numbers of some of the famous services like ssh like uh, dns which is route uh, i mean 53 okay ftp which is 21 so you should remember those port numbers as well okay so that is the reason so we are going to make use of route 53 so what we are going to do today we let us stop here okay and tomorrow we are going to continue with the route 53 and s3 bucket okay and hopefully if you complete this tomorrow then tomorrow we are going to complete almost 90% of aws okay and there will be only one topic that is rds will be remaining that is databases so that we are going to complete on monday or a monday and tuesday and then after that if you want to uh, con i mean we will continue with the devops okay so we are going to do one project also using route 53 s3 bucket and so on and i am going to show you that how you can route okay we are going to see how we can route our traffic you can purchase your own domain also so what you can do if you want to learn along with me i mean if you want to practice along you can go to uh, this one hosting there and you can purchase a domain for yourself okay so you can purchase like uh, anything anything you will get it for 75 rupees which is a dot online so the dot online domain you can purchase here so for example mithun dot online so it is it will check so mithun dot online is already taken so you can try for mithun yes dot online so like this you can uh, check for your name and you can purchase so i am going to show you how you can map this to our application so whenever someone is hitting so for example i have done here right so someone is 
if someone is uh, you know uh, searching for mithun tech training training.com so it will is there any okay so whenever we hit for within tech training so we are getting the website so we will do this exercise so if you purchase any domain okay so i am going to show you how you can map this domain to your server using s3 bucket and which one route 53 okay so we are going to do that project tomorrow okay so any doubt guys okay so if there are no doubts then let me stop recording uh, i have a doubt which is uh...